This is the 2025 Honda HRV EXL. Is it the best subcompact crossover SUV? Hey everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. Today we're at Holmes Honda going over the top trim level of the HRV in our video. If you want to know more, there's a link in the description of the video to the Holmes Honda website. Tell whoever you come in and see if you do that you found out about this vehicle from Tom at Vehicle Visionary. Let's take a look at what we have here. Modern steel metallic is the exterior color. And with the sun shining in through the windshield, you can clearly see that we have a gray interior. We'll take a much closer look at that in just a little bit. And with the sun being the way it is, we don't want to blind you with it. So that's why it's behind us. But it also is drowning out things such as our lighting here. But you have full lighting or full LED lighting, LED headlights, LED daytime running lights. You also have LED fog lights on the rear. We're also going to have an active air curtain right here that's going to be on the front end on both sides. It's going to help to improve your gas mileage. And we have a combination of gloss black and then we have our grill here, gloss, gloss black up, up top. And then we're going to have a different finish, more of a matte finish here with the lower grille. And you'll notice that we have the sensors. They're going to be all over the vehicle. That means you're going to have Honda sensing here, the driving aids. And what exactly are those? You're going to have adaptive cruise control, collision mitigation braking, road departure mitigation, lane keeping assist, and traffic jam assist. Depending on what you want, you can go front wheel drive, which is what this model is, or you can go all wheel drive. Let's talk about our tire and wheel size. So here on the width, this area, that's 215. The sidewall is a 60 series, and that's going to be wrapped around 17 inch wheels. I like the design of the wheel and the combination of color that you have there, different finishes. I think that works. It looks nice. Now, a very popular thing for people side view mirror features so i like to cover that and there's only one thing missing here and that's the fact that they are manually folding as far instead of being power folding but you have the turn signal indicator built in they're power adjustable they're heated and blind spot monitoring is built in and i'm going to take advantage of that bright louisiana sunshine and let you see the remote you can see everything that you want is there including remote start it's a nice sturdy remote and you have a proximity key with that, the walk away feature, walk away auto lock, and you can adjust that in the infotainment screen if you want to. We have our tailgate spoiler right here. That's what Honda calls that instead of a rear roof spoiler as I often refer to it as being. We have our rear window wiper right here and our tastefully done, in my opinion, LED tail lights. I think those look pretty nice. Finishing things off here with the Honda logo and the HRV logo. You don't have any exposed exhaust, but based on what's under the hood and then it's not making a ridiculous amount of horsepower, I don't think that's a bad thing. Let's open the hood and talk a little bit more about what exactly you'll find there. Under the hood is the singular engine offering for the HRV. It's a naturally aspirated two liter four cylinder. It puts out 158 horsepower and 138 pounds feet of torque. Now that is mated to a CVT, but drive it before you make any decisions on what you think it's going to do. You might be surprised at how well it gets down the road. And being that you don't have an insane amount of horsepower under the hood, what does this little SUV do for gas mileage? Here on the window sticker, we see 26 MPG city, 32 highway, 28 combined, and 3.6 gallons of gas per every 100 miles driven. How much gas can you expect to put in when you fill up? Well, first of all, you have capless fuel fill, and you can hold as much as 14 gallons of gas. And while you don't have a power tailgate back here, it is dampened. So when you open it and open it about, oh, that much, and you can see, well, maybe a little bit more than that. There we go. The dampening takes over and we have access to our rear cargo area. 24.4 up to 55.1 cubic feet worth of cargo capacity. There is some interior lighting in there and something else that I think will be very good news for a lot of people besides the fact that you have a 12 volt power outlet right there. Let me raise the floor here and show you what's underneath this area. You'll have to remove the tray right here, but there is good news, a spare tire, no tire repair kit with the HRV. And as you can see, we've lowered the seats down so you can see how everything looks when it's maximized. 
And let's talk about what your second row passengers are going to find. There's actually a lot of space back here. As far as the door panels go, a nice large armrest. I always like having a completely flat armrest and you pretty much have that. There's just barely a little bit of an angle at the very front, but not enough to be an issue. And then we have our bottle holder down here that could also be a door bin, but that's really meant to be a bottle holder more than anything else. And that's primarily because you don't have a fold down armrest right here in the center seat area. So there's nothing to fold down with cup holders built in or anything like that. Pretty simple, pretty basic back here. You do have the oh crap handles right there in case the driver wants to drop the hammer on 158 horsepower. Can you imagine? But no rear air conditioning vents and no USB connectivity back here. Just something to keep in mind. But you also have to consider price point. We do have a singular rear seat pocket back here. And there's also a sunroof that does tilt or slide open. And you have your manual shade right there. Two more things about these rear seats. Number one, they do have some recline built into them, but there's no adjustability for that. They're not at a 90 degree angle, which is good, but they don't actually recline any more than this. And the one thing I do wish Honda would bring back, and I think a lot of you will agree with me from the first generation of the HRV was the magic rear seats. If you're not sure what that was, you could actually take the seat cushion and raise it up like this and lock it in place. And you'd have some additional cargo space in this area if you needed it. And for those of you who are patient enough not to drop a comment and say, what's the price? People do that all the time, and I know they didn't even watch the video. And so don't ever give them the price when they ask for that, but you're going to know because you were patient and waited to this point in the video that it's $30,850. And I know people are going to say, wow, that's way overpriced. I understand where you're coming from on that, but in this day and age, it's really not bad when you consider the price of a lot of other vehicles out there. Let's see what else we have here. With the seats, you have a power adjustable driver's seat, a manually adjustable passenger seat. The only thing that it's missing as far as that manual adjustability is that you can't raise and lower the height of the seat. Something else I would like to see added to these models, even if they don't have a power seat on the passenger side. They're both heated out, although that's one thing we can talk about. So you have three stages of heated for the passenger seat and three stages of heat for the driver's side. We have our gloveless glove box. How do I know it's gloveless? Because I never find any gloves in the glove box. We need to find a new name for that. I think that's be a good thing to come up with. What do you think about the gray interior? It's much better, in my opinion, than black. Now, someone out there might say, Tom, I really like my black interior. If you do, nothing wrong with that. I just prefer a lighter interior, and that's what we have here. So let me grab the camera here from Austin real quick, just to make it easier. His arms aren't quite long enough to reach all the way over here, so we'll be nice and not make him strain his arm. Power mirrors, power mirrors up here, we have power locks, and you can lock and unlock the windows. And you have one touch down and one touch up front windows, but you'll have to hold the buttons down for the rear windows. If you would like to attempt a front wheel drive burnout, I do recommend shutting traction control off right there first, but that's how you turn it on and off. And then the lever right here allows you to adjust the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. Do make sure to put that back in place before you head down the road. And here is our digital instrument cluster. A pretty simple, pretty basic, pretty straightforward. I can use the scroll wheel right here to go through a lot of different information. If I want to go into one of the menus right here, such as navigation, I just push on that scroll wheel, hit the home button to the left of that to go back. And you can see what all is going on there. Here's how you handle everything with your adaptive cruise control. And then we have our front and rear window wiper lever right here. We also have a multitasker right here. Someone might say, well, wait a minute, Tom, how's that a multitasker? I thought all you did was turn the lights on and off right there or just set them to auto and it was done. There actually is another function that this lever performs. Some of you might be very confused and looking at the screen like a dog hearing a new sound with your head tilted sideways because you have no idea what that means. And you might say, how do you know that, Tom? I'm going to let Austin have the camera back now because I'm going to look right at you when I answer that question because I drive around you on a regular basis and you don't use your blinkers. Well, not all of you, but good for those of you who do. The nine inch touch screen right here. A lot of people tell me that in the current generation of the Honda Pilot, the nine inch touch screen is too small. 
What do you think about that here? I think it's the right size. It works really well, very easy to use. It doesn't seem to have any lag in it at all. So depending on what you're going into, if we go into general settings right there, I say it doesn't have any lag in it. Lag just a quarter of a second right there or so, but not too bad. Vehicle settings right here. I like the vehicle settings. The graphics make it very easy to find whatever it is you need to do, whatever you need to change or turn on or do whatever you're looking for, whatever you're trying to find there. And you can wirelessly pair your smartphone here. So that's a good thing. You have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration. So that means you can use your favorite app for navigation. We have home, back, and something that's kind of old school right here, but I know Honda owners want it really badly because the Ridgeline at one point didn't have the knob to control the volume on the radio or turn it on or off, and people asked for it to come back. So Honda brought it back. Kind of interesting. Down here, we're going to have dual zone climate control. Nice to have that. Easy to deal with. You can adjust your fan speed and all of that stuff. And going back to the center screen real quick, I do want to show you that you have your multi-view rear view camera. Only one camera on the vehicle, but it does offer three different views. As you can see right there, if you're worried about hitting something behind you when you're backing up or just seeing how close you get to the curve or whatever's behind you, well, that's how you do that. Easy to deal with. And you'll find a USB port right here. And this is not the only USB port in the vehicle. I'm going to show you where a couple more are shortly. And a wireless charging pad. Nice to have that. You can actually turn that on or off if you want to. If it's not working, you can push that button right there and the green light will illuminate. And we also have cup holders right here a conventional style shifter right here. And there's a couple of things to talk about with the shifter. We have multiple driving modes, but to go into sport mode, you're gonna go right here, that's drive, and then you have the S. I apologize for getting my hand on the shot. It's just kind of tight in here. S is going to be sport mode right there, and that L is low. So if you're in a low traction situation, you can put it in that setting, go to L, and that means you still have all of the power and torque available, but it stays in low gear. And here is our drive mode selector. So I'm going to grab the camera back one more time here because the drive modes, we go through those, the menu right here on the instrument cluster. So you're going to start with normal. You can see the graphic that goes with that. We go to econ and you have snow mode. And obviously those are not the only modes you have based on what I just told you about how you go into sport mode down here. Here's your hill start assist. You have your power parking brake and brake hold mode right there. The center console can be used as an armrest. It is a little bit on the low side for me personally, but that's not a huge deal. I think that can work. It's At least it's there. We also have the center console right here that has a reasonable amount of space within, not too terribly bad. And I don't know how easily we can show it to you, but right under here, we might have to get out to show it to you, I'm not sure, but you can see there's a small pass-through right here, and there is a USB port right there. There's also one on this side. So what that means is if you've got a long enough adapter, you can actually run USB connectivity back to your rear seat passengers, and then not having USB ports back there is taken care of. And one last thing, here is the control on the upper console for opening and closing your power sunroof. And you can see some of the other options and features that you have right there. Not a lot going on to talk about, but I know a lot of you like to see it, so now you've seen it. All right, let's talk about driving the HRV. It's not a rocket ship, but if you're thinking about buying one of these and you're saying, I'm just not so sure about 158 horsepower, you're really you're really not going to find a lot of competitors that have a lot more horsepower than this for the most part. Get out and drive it. See what you think about it. And I know that depends on where you are and what your situation is, what the driving conditions are. But for what I deal with when I take these test drives with these HRVs, it gets up to speed with no problem. I just get on down the road. No big deal. I'm not expecting it to go zero to 60 in three seconds flat. Of course, it might not even do it six. I don't know. I've never tried to see what the zero to 60 is. I don't remember for sure what the numbers are that are given on the internet, but I guarantee it's not three seconds flat. That's for sure. But it does a good job of getting it down the road. It's a very comfortable vehicle. I feel comfortable over here if I stay off the center line. 
I think somebody who is over six feet tall could fit here, no problem. The seat is actually up somewhat high for me. I could lower it down if I wanted to, but I'm good with where I am. Now, I'm five foot ten, so I can't really tell you for sure what exactly the situation would be for somebody who's over six feet, but I pretty sure on some of the HRV videos I've done in the past that we've had some people that said yeah, they're 6'3 or 6'4 and they fit just fine. A lot of adjustability built in with the adjustable steering wheel and the adjustable seat right here so it shouldn't be a problem. Very comfortable, very enjoyable to drive, the ride quality is good. These seats seem to be very comfortable so that's nice to know. Steering wheel, comfortable, and a tight turning radius. If you're looking for a vehicle, if this is something you need, you're looking for as your next vehicle, and it works for you, and you live in a really big congested area, a city with a lot of traffic, well, it would definitely do a good job of zipping around in congested conditions. That's for sure. Nice tight turning radius, just very maneuverable. I like that. And the fact that it's available in all-wheel drive gives a little bit more of adjustability, or should I say usability, for those who live in areas where you deal with snow and ice on a regular basis. The, the ride height is high enough to where that should help you out in a lot of those situations. So it's a good thing. It's, it's very versatile. That's the word I was trying to find earlier. There we go. Technology is easy to learn and use. I like that. Whether you think the touch screen is too big or too small or just right, it's very simple to learn and use. It has a nice high-end, high-tech look to it. I shouldn't say high-end, but high-tech. But that doesn't mean it's complicated to learn. So nice to know that you have simplistic technology, comfortable interior, a reasonable amount of space even for your second row passengers back there. So one of the vehicles that will definitely get the job done if you're looking for a subcompact crossover, it pretty much checks off all of the boxes Depending on your situation, I'm curious to know what your top three must-haves are when it comes to buying your next vehicle. Okay, tell me what you think about the 2025 Honda HRV EXL. Is it the best subcompact crossover SUV? Tell me what your thoughts are down in the comments section. I do want to say a special thanks to my friends at Holmes Honda for loaning us this HRV for the day so we could tell you all about it. And a special thanks to all of you for being kind enough to give us the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button. That way, it helps us out a lot. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Share this video on your timelines on social media. And if you would like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and we'll see you there.